starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the race to rescue First Republic Bank. Our banking system is sound and resilient with strong capital and liquidity. Just ahead, reaction from lead economists following the third major U.S. bank meltdown in less than two months. Let's look out there with live cam starting at a nice 63 degrees. Not too bad yet, but we're going to check in with Mike to see when the heat will come back. All done with Fiesta. <laughs> what a year. Hope you had a blast this weekend. It was uh, lovely for sure. Good morning. It's Monday. It is May 1st. Thanks for joining us. Yes, it was lots of fun and we had a great time meeting all of you there. Ton of folks on Friday down at Battle Flowers. Mike Ostrage had his hands full as well with the yes. after party and I'm sure a weekend full of activities. Have and, you recovered yet? And the band festival Thursday night, That's which, right. you know, the weather couldn't have been perfect. We had those storms Friday night. Yeah, That's right. Uh, and but the, we and split the uprights with those storms. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And this weekend was just sensational. Yesterday was pretty darn hot. We gained 37 degrees between the low and the high yesterday. Well, wow. it went very hot, very quick. Yeah, because the air was so dry. Now, that's kind of a continuation of what we're seeing uh, this morning over the weekend. It is we got clear skies. Temperatures are very, very pleasant out there. We are at 66 right now. 64 comfort will continue to drop down because we still have pretty dry air in place with these dew points down in the 40s, uh, just about 50 at Lotus. So enjoy it while it lasts because the end is in sight. These numbers are going to continue to go up as winds shift around out of the southeast later on today and still going to be every bit as hot as yesterday, but you'll notice it more because of the extra humidity. Mold, pecan, grass all on the low side. No oak is showing up, which is nice to hear and see at 56 degrees this morning. So again, we continue to drop down lots of clear skies out there, and then we will start to see more clouds this afternoon with those hot temperatures. We're going to be about four above normal and the humidity continues to come up and with the extra humidity overnight the next couple of mornings we'll have a little bit of patchy fog a little mist here do have some more rain chances though later on this week we'll talk about that and never too soon to take a look ahead to the first weekend of may details in just a couple of minutes Steph, mark that's a deal. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man was shot while riding in a car just north of the downtown area overnight. Happened just before midnight. Police say the victim, a man in his 20s or 30s, was in a vehicle when he was shot twice in the head. The driver of the vehicle took him to a nearby hospital. Police say the man is in critical condition. So far, SAPD says they don't have a suspect description. Now to more fallout from the U.S. banking crisis. This morning, federal regulators have found a new buyer for First Republic Bank. And as ABC's Justin Finch reports, it is the latest effort to pull that distressed lender from the brink of following the collapses of two banks back in March. This morning, another race to rescue First Republic Bank. Regulators seized First Republic and quickly struck a deal to sell most of its operations to J.P. Morgan Chase, marking the third major U.S. bank meltdown in less than two months. The FDIC will share losses with the bank, agreeing that its insurance fund would take a hit of the $13 billion in the deal. The FDIC announcing 84 First Republic Bank branches across eight states will reopen this morning as J.P. Morgan Chase bank branches. San Francisco-based First Republic saw its stock plunge 75% last week after revealing account holders withdrew $100 billion in deposits during the recent banking crisis. The deposit flight was greater than expected. The U.S. financial system still aching after back-to-back -back bank failures starting March 10th with the Silicon Valley bank collapse. Two days later, Signature Bank failed. And by March 16th, as investors raised red flags about First Republic, 11 major banks supplied a $30 billion cash infusion. Sources telling ABC News, J.P. Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, and Fed Chair Jerome Powell brokered that deal. Our banking system is sound and resilient with strong capital and liquidity. But the Federal Reserve admitting in an internal review released Friday that it could have done more to avert that Silicon Valley bank collapse. California House Democrat Ro Khanna calling for tighter oversight. Every time the economy heats up, we somehow say deregulate, deregulate, and it never works out. And the Federal Reserve will be in the spotlight again this week for its interest rate decision. Another hike is expected in its ongoing effort to cool inflation. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 
This morning, the FBI and other Texas authorities are still looking for the suspect connected to an execution style shooting that killed five family members in Cleveland, Texas, just north of Houston. The shooting happened Friday night after neighbors asked the suspect Francisco Oropesa to stop shooting his gun in the yard of his home. He in turn said that he would do what he wanted in his front yard and went on a shooting rampage. Oropesa is still on the loose and likely armed with an AR-15 style rifle. The FBI say he says he is a threat to the community, and so far they have zero leads on where Oropesa is. Right now, there's an $80,000 reward for information leading to his capture. A weekend of extreme weather in many parts of the country had more than 22 million on alert. That is after a twister was seen picking up cars in Florida. A reported tornado also caused serious damage in Virginia Beach last night, and relentless rain flooded parts of the Northeast on Sunday. In the Midwest, Mississippi River is expected to crest today. The river has risen to its highest levels in decades in parts of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois due to fast melting snow. To Washington, D.C. now, where the battle over the debt ceiling enters the month of May. President Biden and most Democratic lawmakers want the debt limit raised with no spending cuts. Republicans are pushing forward with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's Limit, Save, and Grow Act of 2023, which raises the debt limit but trims the budget. Economic officials, including Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, says the U.S. government will go broke by summer unless Congress boosts the debt limit. Time now, 436 and 63 degrees for now. The Astros trying to avoid a sweep against the Phillies on a World Series rematch. Up next, how Houston was able to hold on for the win. And let's check your roads with TransGuy looking over there at Highway 90 at Loop 410. Things look pretty good there. And also at Highway 281 at Grayson. It's early, but things are moving. April showers bring May flowers, right? Yes. We'll find out this week with a look outside right now at San Antonio International Airport. We're just getting started here on Good Morning San Antonio. Last Monday, the defending champion Houston Astros were tied with the Rangers atop the AL West, but they've since faltered. Yesterday, they were trying to avoid a sweep against the Phillies on a World Series rematch. Good start for the home team. Bottom of the fourth, Jake Myers crunches one to deep left. And that's a solo shot. Strohs go up 3-1. Bottom of the fifth, another chance. Kyle Tucker golfs a single in the shallow left. Alex Bregman rounds third, and he will score. That holds up as the game running win. Houston wins at 4-3. They will start a three-game series against San Fran starting tonight. Meanwhile, the Rangers going for the series win against the Yankees at home. How's this for a start? Bottom of the first bases loaders. Josh Young smokes one deep to right. That's gone. A grand slam for the MacArthur High School kid. Opens the scoring. Two hits, three runs, and far, five RBIs for Young. Texas demolishes the Yankees 15-2 to to win the series. They will host the Diamondbacks tomorrow night at 7.05. And to the diamond, our own backyard. Missions fell short in the series finale yesterday, 6-3 against the Northwest Arkansas Naturals. Uh, they split the series. They fall to 10-10 and 10 on the season. So the missions will look to right the ship on the road with a six-game series against the Tulsa Drillers starting tomorrow night. Once again, San Antonio FC outshot their opponent, but settled for a draw instead of a win. Saturday night at Toyota Field, Las Vegas Lights FC scored in the 12th minute. They held the advantage until Christian Parano found the equalizer via free kick from just outside the box in the 42nd minute. In this match, ends uh, in a 1-1 draw despite SAFC outshooting Vegas 12-6. San Antonio FC heads to Vegas for a rematch with the Lights FC. That's Sunday, May 7th. At 5 p.m. And that's also a quick look at morning sports. Sounds good. Time now for 41 and 63 degrees for now. A mom influencer is now facing up to six months in jail just ahead. What's next for the mother accused of lying about a kidnapping of her two children that never happened. And welcome back. It is 444. A California mother and social media influencer has been found guilty of falsely accusing a couple of trying to kidnap her children. ABC's Rihanna Nali has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the mom influencer now facing up to six months in jail. I don't know if I'll ever be composed talking about this. Um, so here we go. A California jury finding Kathleen Sorensen guilty of making a false report to police, accused of lying about a kidnapping of her two children 
that never happened. Sorensen reporting a kidnapping to police in December 2020 and then posting this Instagram video. My children were the targets of attempted kidnap. But there had been no kidnapping. Her attorney saying Sorensen now realizes she made a mistake. She misperceived and misunderstood a series of random events which were occurring around her. So what happens next to Sorensen? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Fiesta is officially over after celebrating for several days and highlighting our South Texas heritage and history. Our Alyssa Cole introduces us to a San Antonio couple who used their artistic talents to capture the colorful culture of San Antonio. Meet Caroline and William Carrington. They've been creating Western art for years. William, who is a former teacher, was inspired by his wife, Caroline, who's a professional artist with more than 20 years of experience. We need art for sure. Um, it brightens up life and makes things interesting. It tells history. Um, without art, things are bland. The two San Antonio natives recently participated in the Briscoe Western Art Museum's Night of Artists fundraiser, where 300 artists from across the country showcased landscapes, portraits, and sculptures, and much more. It's not typical Western art. It's not just the cowboys. It's just, it's not all, you know, the Indians and the history. It's also very uh, present. It's happening right now. I feel very contemporary. I feel like I'm living the Western art life that I want, want to lead. The couple is inspired by nature and folklore tales of South Texas as muses to tell their stories. My inspiration probably is, is kind of humor, obviously, and uh, kind of an admiration for wildlife, the Texas wildlife. I always say that the jackrabbit, the poor things, are just constantly getting attacked. You know, land, sea, and air, so to speak. Hawks, eagles, snakes, everything's trying to get them. So they're, they're, all they do every day is figure out how to stay alive. Caroline Williams and all the artists work at a personal and unique touch. In Williams' case, it's almost as if he has an empathetic eye for the jackrabbit and uses it as inspiration. They each have their own style and you start to identify them and the vibrancy in these pictures and how it captures the light. It is truly something that you have to come and see for yourself. You're invited to visit because for one day only, the Briscoe Western Arts Museum will allow the public to view the last day of this exhibition for free. It's part of their Locals Day initiative to engage the community. It's this upcoming Sunday, May 7th. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Let's look out there with Trans Guy looking over at I-37 at Fair Avenue. Things look good and Mark looked at the roads earlier on the, what is it, the Trans, Trans Guide website and everything seems to be okay. No accidents at this hour. Yeah, that's uh, courtesy TxDOT. Oh, TxDOT. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. Hi, good morning. Nice Welcome well, back. What, what were you just sharing with the class? Your, your observation about this year yes. so far? It just seemed like Fiesta went by so quickly this year. A second? Yeah. I yes. second that. Yes, it did. Is it because you keep talking about it that much? You know, kind of like leading up to Christmas, how it I don't know. I so think we had so around. much on our plate KSAT wise that it we was, just, it's yeah. like next, yeah. you know, we were on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So, also, time flies when you're having fun. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. And Friday was a blur. Yeah, it yeah. was. All right, switching gears completely. Yeah. As far as, because we've had a lot of decent rain around here so far for the month. We are for the month, well, month April. of April, uh, two and a third inches above normal. Above. Oh. Since March 1st, the beginning of um, meteorological spring, that is now an uh, inch and a third above normal. Well, that's a nice little climatological flip flop for us. And we are only a half inch behind for the year. So we made up a whole Great. bunch of ground, and there's more rain chances to come. So, starting off, clear skies out there, beautiful morning. May actually need a light little jacket. We've got uh, mid 60s and uh, some upper 50s. Rio Medina at 53, 54 right now in Hondo. Humidity is still on the low side. However, these numbers have gone up a little bit just to compare to yesterday morning. Yesterday we did drop down to 50 and then soared all the way up to 87 degrees because of the really, really dry air that was in place. It doesn't take as much energy to heat up dry air as it does moisture. So this morning we are also going to be heating up, losing a temperature in the next couple of hours, dipping down to 56 degrees. Then we're going to be jumping up very quickly all the way up to 80 today at noon because the dry air heats up easily and then topping off at 87. More clouds around here 
and more humidity because the wind is going to shift around to the southeast. So yes, it will begin its return. And as you can see with these uh, dew point temperatures low this morning, here they come creeping back up here, not ridiculously humid, but we'll still start to see some of these dew points getting into the 60s, and that is just going to continue to be the case. So by tomorrow morning, with that extra moisture getting pumped on in here, we're probably going to have a little mist, a little fog around the area, and that's going to be the situation on Wednesday as well. And the humidity will just continue to go up as we go on in through the day and Right now, not looking at any break in the humidity. So once it comes back, it's going to be like that unwelcome house guest. It's going to be sticking around for a long time. So today we have a lot of clear skies this morning. Clouds will start to move on in here, especially from the west. A lot of uh, high clouds hanging around here and I'm call it partly cloudy skies, but then the clouds will continue to thicken up as we go into tonight. Jumping ahead a little bit further by Thursday, late Wednesday, maybe, but Thursday, a couple of showers around here and then a better chance of rain going into Thursday night and there could actually be a couple of spots and again this is still a few days away but a couple of spots with some potentially heavy downpours by Thursday night overnight into Friday. Uh, Friday we'll still have a lot of clouds around here maybe a couple of showers and then I think we see a few more coming in here on Saturday. Models are not completely in agreement with this but like I said the one thing I think we take away from this is the fact that the start of May is going to be different than what we had over the weekend with more humidity coming in here, more rain chances and those potentially heavy downpours, just spotty heavy downpours uh, later on Thursday. 80 today at noon. Good looking morning. I mean, very, very nice. Enjoy it, though, because like I said, the humidity is going to come back on in here. Not ridiculously humid this afternoon, but you'll notice it with that 87 degrees. Now, tomorrow's going to be cooler down to a normal high temperature. A lot of humidity, morning mist and fog. Same thing on Wednesday and notice how the low temperatures stay in the upper 60s, 70 degrees. A lot of humidity and then chance of rain. Best chance of rain is going to be late Thursday night and then uh, the weekend is just going to be hot and humid. A couple of showers around here. What we're used to, the hot and humid yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, because boy, it was so nice this weekend. Yes, it was. Loved it. Thanks, Mike. 452, 63 degrees. Up next, former SNL star Bill Hader talks about possibly returning to the show. Plus, pick three numbers 980, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 3691, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 4, 9, 29, 31, 32. Lotto, Texas, 7, 17, 25, 41, 45, 53. And your Powerball numbers 16, 53, 54, 57, 65, Powerball 8, Power Play 2. Good luck. Super Mario gets to the billion dollar mark, plus a big anniversary for the famous, a, a famous Johnny Cash song. For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. Is there a God? It's me, Margaret. The best of the new releases, a modest 6.8 billion third place bow for Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret, adapted from the beloved book. New York's hottest club is boof. <laughs> Former SNL star Bill Hader tells The Independent he's open to returning to the show as his beloved nightlife guide character Stefan. The fourth and final season of his hit HBO drama Barry wraps May 28th. Cause you're mine. I walk the line. 67 years ago Monday, Johnny Cash released his classic hit I Walk the Line. No other shotgun rider. And happy 56th birthday to country superstar Tim McGraw. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. 456, 63 degrees. This morning, the search for the suspect connected to an execution-style shooting that killed five family members in Cleveland, Texas. Up next on GMSA, why the FBI says they have no idea where he is right now. Plus, what San Antonio police are saying about a motive behind a murder that happened at an apartment complex near the medical center. Quick check of the roads with Transguide looking over at I-37 at Fair where things seem okay at this hour, but we were going to have an update with our Stephen Cavazos who just walked in the studio after the break. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. This morning, a suspect that killed five people in Cleveland, Texas is still on the loose somewhere in Texas and likely armed with an AR-15 style rifle. Right now, we just don't know. Because if we did, we would have him in custody right now. We do not know where he is. We don't have any tips right now to where he may be. Coming up next, how the FBI is trying to track him down. 
Outside with live cam, a post Fiesta forecast and the first full week of May 2023. We'll talk to Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday. May 1st. That's right. It is May. Thanks for joining us. April wrapped up pretty quick and so did Fiesta. Let's jump right over to Mike Ostrage and see how things are looking out there right now. You know, it's funny you said post Fiesta forecast. This week is going to be more like what we would always think of as Fiesta weather. It's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. This morning we're starting off really nice out there. Pretty much a continuation of what we had over the weekend because the weekend was just sensational. 63 degrees right now out at the airport. Dew points at 50, so it's still on the low side. The wind is out of the south. It's going to continue, though, to swing around to the southeast. It is going to be hot again today. We hit 87 yesterday. Very, very dry. If you were in the shade, it wasn't too bad, but temperatures yesterday were a good four, almost five degrees above normal, and that'll be the situation again today. Aquifer went up three tenths of a foot, which is fantastic news, and just little bits of mold pecan and the other one that was in there. I just, just skipped my mind. <laughs> Short term memory. All right, we had a lot of clear skies yesterday, dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, but now more moisture is going to start to work its way back in here upstairs in the atmosphere, and that's going to help out with more clouds. We've got a lot of clear skies right now, but it, we are going to continue to cloud up as the uh, day rolls on. Again, basically just high clouds, then they'll continue to thicken up later on tonight. Upper 80s later on today, again, more clouds, humidity begins its return. So you'll definitely feel the 87 degrees, not like slappy in the face kind of humidity, but humidity will continue to go up overnight. And so that will lead to fog, uh, maybe a couple of sprinkles, low 80s tomorrow, though. So we'll be closer to a normal temperature. And that's going to be the same situation on Wednesday. Then we get into the mid and latter part of the week. Better rain chances, slight chance on Wednesday, but much better chance Thursday, especially Thursday night. And that will lead into early Friday. And then the weekend, a couple of showers on Saturday and later on Saturday. Plus, it is just going to be hot and humid this weekend. Kind of an early taste of summer. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Mr. Cavazos. How was your weekend? Too fast, Mike, but we definitely had a great time uh, meeting a lot of our viewers over at some of our insider events, so I feel pretty fulfilled uh, after a nice good weekend. But if we have to get the new week rolling this early in the morning, thankfully there is nothing major slowing folks down. Get a quick look around town. 35 at Walls and a little bit of a fuzzy shot there from Trans Guide, but uh, really isn't causing any issues. I've not seen any major problems out there, so just buckle up, drive safe, and watch out for a few road closures. But uh, although things are moving along just fine, uh, I did notice that there was a minor slowdown here at Super 1604 Westbound, not too far from Bitters Road. Traffic right now, we're picking it up as moving at just seven miles per hour, so not very fast. It's a very small part of a 1604 that is moving pretty slowly, so we'll watch it closely. I'm not seeing anything being reported by TxDOT just yet, but if there's an update, we'll be sure to let you know. Why look the map. As I mentioned, though, it is really going to be a lot of that active construction. We have a new list of closures for the month of May. We'll get to that a little bit later on. But if you have to get on over here to San Antonio this early in the morning, thankfully it is still very green from Seguin, about 30 minutes right now along I-10 westbound. The usual drive time for our friends in Lavernia that are traveling along 87 northbound, about 33 minutes and a 28 minute commute for our friends down in Floresville. But back here again in town, 37 at Fair Avenue is not a bad shot. Very quiet, but we'll find out what's causing that slowdown along Loop 1604 and have an update on some of those road closures that will be coming up a little bit later on in this newscast. Mark Steff. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police are trying to figure out the motive behind a murder that happened at an apartment complex near the medical center. This all started on Sunday morning when a man invited another man and woman over for drinks. Now, police say the suspect worked at the apartment complex where that man and woman lived. Now, police also say things escalated when the suspect shot and killed the man and held the woman at gunpoint for several hours. That suspect caused a standoff with police, but he eventually surrendered. He knew them for quite some time. He had, uh, he had, he had built a relationship with them. And then last night, he uh, lured them over here. Now, right now, San Antonio police have not released the name of the suspect or the name of the person who was killed. They say they do not know the motive yet, but they say that suspect worked at the apartment complex.
A bond between a local college athlete and a young nine-year-old girl could be award-winning. They are vying for your vote to be honored as a teammate of the year. Haley Atwood, a UTSA women's basketball player, met Mia Pettis through Team Impact. That's an organization that pairs collegiate athletes with kids living with disabilities or with serious illness, like Mia, who is battling leukemia. She and Atwood are on a mission to spread awareness, and they are using their nomination for Team Impact's teammate of the year to do it. Once you tell everybody, then other people will know about um, kids with cancer. Then, um, like maybe like they'll do something about it, and tr probably like scientists will try to find like a cure for different types of cancers, like brain cancer. The Teammate of the Year Award honors the bond built at a gala in Boston on June 1st. Voting for Teammate of the Year ends on May 4th. We have a link to the website on ksat.com. This morning, hundreds of officers are searching for the man accused of opening fire inside a neighbor's home in Cleveland, Texas, just north of Houston. Five people were killed, including an eight-year-old boy. And as ABC's Lionel Moyes reports, our authorities say that last night they have zero leads as they conduct door-to-door -door searches. <laughs> Hundreds of people gathered at this elementary school north of Houston last night, remembering the victims of a shooting rampage that has this small community living in fear. No tengo palabras como... Wilson Garcia and his wife were hosting guests at their home Friday night when Garcia says his neighbor, Francisco Oropesa, began firing an AR-15 from his porch for fun. This is a small community where neighbors say that every single weekend people fire weapons for fun. It's the norm. What happened here at this house, though, no one thought was possible. Garcia says when he asked Oropesa to stop, Oropesa stormed into his house and began shooting, killing five people, including Garcia's wife and son. Garcia says after Oropesa shot his wife, another woman told him to escape through the window because she knew his wife would not survive. Ten people in the house escaped without injuries. According to authorities, two women were found lying on top of surviving children. And witnesses describe other children surviving after someone threw a pile of clothes on them. Authorities and scent dogs later tracked Oropesa to a wooded area, finding his clothes and phone, but then they lost track of him. We have zero leads. Investigators are now offering an $80,000 reward for information leading to Oropesa. Meanwhile, Texas Governor Greg Abbott is now facing criticism for identifying the victims as undocumented immigrants in the same statement in which he offered condolences to their loved ones. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. 50762 degrees. Just ahead on GMSAY, Apple's reportedly redesigning the Apple Watch's user interface. And next, why there's a shortage in some very common medicines and what your options are if you can't find what you normally buy. It's like out there with live cam. It's going to feel like May this week. That's what Mike tells us. 62 degrees for now, though. We're going to check in with him for all the details a little later on. It's a problem that's been building for the past year now has become a major issue. A shortage in very common medicines often used for kids, but adults as well. A pediatric hospitalist told our Courtney Friedman, it's not a reason to panic, but it is important to know what your options are. Amoxicillin is used for bacterial infections like strep throat or pneumonia. Albuterol, used in nebulizers, helps with respiratory problems. Both used a lot for kids and both experiencing a big shortage that's been building for the past year. We had this national crisis of, of kids in the hospital and it going to clinics with infections. And so we really did see a bigger need for it. And so I think it just really stressed the system. So if you're a parent or you need these medications yourself, it is not time to panic. Don't worry. At these pharmacies, there are multiple backup options for each of these prescriptions. So amoxicillin is usually our go-to. We love amoxicillin in pediatrics. Dr. Dina Tom with University Hospital and UT Health San Antonio says once the shortage started, they moved to a similar antibiotic called Augmentin. But now there's a shortage of that too. The third option, good old penicillin. So penicillin can treat strep throat very well. It is, um, it doesn't taste horrible and it's a, it's a very safe 
kind of cheap thing to do. So we can actually use that more than we realize. She emphasizes that antibiotics are only for bacterial infections. And most infections are viral. So, um, you know, keep in mind if your pediatrician is saying, let's just watch and wait and see if, it, if they really need it, that they really do have your best interest and your kid's best interest at heart. As for the albuterol, there's a similar medicine called Zopinex. That therapy has been what we've always uh, gone to in in a um, little bit of special cases because it has less side effects, but it's also more expensive. Dr. Tom also says regular inhalers work great too. So make sure to ask your child's doctor about which option would be best for them. That was Courtney Friedman reporting. And Dr. Tom also said if you get to your pharmacy and they are out of the prescription, they can call the pediatrician to send over one of those alternative medications instead. Time check, 513, 62 degrees. Twitter is changing things again up next. Why it's now allowing media publishers to charge users on a per article basis. And a new feature on Instagram can help you jazz up your photo carousels. from our collection of gift sets starting at $99. Want more from your vitamins? Get more with Nature's Bounty. From the first ever triple action sleep supplement to daily digestive support to more wellness solutions every day. Get more with Nature's Bounty. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash hire. Just about 517, Apple is reportedly making some changes to the Apple Watch. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, the Apple Watch is reportedly getting a major redesign. According to Bloomberg, the overhauled operating system will have a new focus on apps. The device will be reminiscent of the Surrey watch face that was introduced in 2017, and Apple is reportedly testing a tweak to the Apple Watch's physical buttons. More Twitter changes are on the way. Elon Musk will allow media outlets to charge users per article, as opposed to having them pay for a full subscription. Musk calls the move a win-win for media organizations and the public. The feature is expected to begin this month. Finally, Instagram is testing a new way to let users add songs to the photo carousels they post. The platform already allows you to add music to individual pictures. The new feature is already available in a few countries. No word on when it will debut here in the U.S. Those are your Tech Bites. I'm Rhiannon and Allie. Have a great day. Exactly 518. Anything we need to be alert of out there on the roads right now, Stephen? Just some overnight construction, guys. We okay. see a little bit lingering uh, around our trans guide camera. Some of it has uh, wrapped up. Uh, in fact, on the way into work along I-10, I noticed that there were some sweepers out there. So you may encounter some of those sweepers that are wrapping up the work overnight. So just make sure to watch out, move over, or slow down. Always a good idea to just give them plenty of room. But thankfully, you see there at I-10 at Bernie Stage and even 37 at 410, there's really not a lot out there. But we take you to the map. And you can see a lot of it's going to be the scattered active construction. Some of it's overnight. And now that it's May, we can expect a lot of it to continue up into the early days of June. Really seems like it's going to be ongoing, especially here along State Highway 181 in Wilson County. Now, there's been cable installation work that's been ongoing, and it's going to pick up again today. So be in mind, uh, keep this in mind, it starts at 8 in the morning and should wrap at 4 in the afternoon. According to TechSat, we're going to see a portion of this end on May 6th. That's this Friday, uh, or last. Uh, Saturday, May 6th, pardon me. Uh, we'll see alternating lane closures in both directions from the Bear County line to Standish Street. But uh, I just updated the list of current closures on our website so you could scan this QR code and there's a full list of closures. Just remember to scroll to the bottom of the screen. But not just that, there's a new question that we want to hear from where we want to hear from you. Uh, you know, how are you getting around a lot of these active construction zones? Leave us your comments. We want to know what your solutions are. But other than that, just make sure to plan ahead, Mike. And don't forget round construction zones yeah. when there are uh, lower speed signs posted. Yes. Make sure you obey those. Yes, good advice. You get big trouble with that. All right, one last Fiesta picture, and this is gorgeous. Miss Fiesta and maybe a future Miss Fiesta there.
Absolutely beautiful. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Yeah, it was just a fantastic weekend. This morning is a continuation of that. We got a lot of clear skies out there. Still dry air, really pleasant when you step outside. Maybe a light jacket. Yesterday we dropped down to 50. We're not going to be that cool this morning. We have dropped down three degrees just in the past hour. We'll continue to drop down another five, six, seven degrees in the next few hours because the air is still fairly dry, although these numbers have crept up a little bit as compared to yesterday, and that will definitely be the situation. So this morning we're going to bottom out of 56 and a lot of clear skies out there, maybe a stray cloud or two here or there. Some high clouds starting to move on in 80 at noon. So with the air dry enough, it's going to warm up very quickly kind of like what it did yesterday all the way up through noon. Then we start to see humidity, not like it's going to be oppressive, but just not as comfortable as yesterday, even in the, the shade. 87 for high temperature, more clouds out there, a lot of clouds around tonight. Humidity will continue, like I said, to increase throughout the rest of today, overnight. And as that moisture comes back in here, we're going to be seeing some mist and drizzle, maybe a little patchy fog around the area tomorrow. That'll be the situation on Thursday, excuse me, on Wednesday as well. Computer model, Start off a lot of clear skies. Some of those high clouds move on in here later on this afternoon. And then, like I said, tonight and pretty much a lot of clouds around little breaks here and there throughout the rest of the week. We're not going to be seeing just these beautiful, clear blue skies like we had on Saturday as well as on Sunday. And now as far as temperatures the rest of the week, it's going to be hot today and then tomorrow and Wednesday we're close to normal readings. Then it starts to heat back up again and there were some uh, some indications or sense some thinking that we'd get up close to 90, which a lot of folks will be by the weekend, but uh, the humidity is really going to be up there. We're going to have more clouds around here, so I'm keeping our upper 80s, but we'll still be averaging what, close to five degrees above normal and then low temperatures. Also, here's a good indication that you got a bunch of humidity around here and some clouds overnight. Look at these low temperatures staying at 70 degrees as we go in toward the end of the week and the weekend and starting off on next week. So different story than what we had throughout a good chunk of Fiesta hot and humid this week. 80 at noon, mostly sunny skies. 87 today, this morning, especially the first half of the day, is going to be pretty nice. Enjoy it. And then, like I said, a little more humidity works its way back on in here. 87 degrees, then plenty of humidity overnight tomorrow. The rest of the week, mist drizzle, a little fog in the morning tomorrow, Wednesday. A uh, chance of a shower maybe late Wednesday, a better chance throughout the day Thursday, and especially Thursday night, overnight on Friday. We're going to have to watch out for some potentially some pockets of some heavy rain around here. Thursday late into early, early Friday and a couple of showers left over Friday, maybe on Saturday as well, but just basically hot and humid this weekend. Hey, real quick, uh, happy belated birthday to Willie Nelson. He turned 90 on Saturday. That's oh, really? Oh, you were busy with Fiesta. Oh, okay, did. Yes, happy birthday, Willie. Happy work birthday. 522, 62 degrees. Up next, how a bilingual series, Casa Grande. Pick three numbers, 980, Fireball 2, Daily 4, 3691, Fireball 2. Cash 5, 4, 9, 29, 31, 32. Lotto, Texas, 717, 25, 41, 45, 53. And your Powerball numbers, 16, 53, 54, 57, 65. Powerball 8, Power Play 2. Good luck. The Mario Brothers now have a billion reasons to celebrate, and for a little while yesterday, you could watch it somewhere besides movie theaters. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Where is my daughter? A forbidden romance highlights the conflicts between migrant workers and wealthy landowners in Casa Grande. The bilingual series follows the intersecting lives of families in the farmlands of Northern California, exploring themes of class, culture, and immigration. Casa Grande debuts today on Amazon Freebie. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Now 527, 62 degrees. AI technology is getting a stronger grip on the working world. Up next, we'll look at which jobs and careers are most at risk of being wiped out. And the party comes to an end. Up next, how some changes led to a lot of new fun for Fiesta this year, plus a look at the final celebration at Festival de Cascarones. And let's look out there with TransSky looking over at I-37 at Loop 410 where things appear to be moving. Also there at I-37 at Fair Avenue, but we're going to get an update with our Stephen Cavazos just after the break. 
making headlines this morning. 14 million jobs will disappear in the next five years, all thanks to artificial intelligence. This could potentially save time and resources, but it could also lead to a loss of personal connections. Up next, a look at the fastest declining jobs, plus the battle over the debt ceiling enters the month of May. And let's look out there with live cam. We're at 61 degrees right now. Not too bad for the morning, but we're going to check in with Mike to see when that heat is going to sneak back in. And good morning to you. It's Monday, May 1st. Thanks for joining us. We are all back in. <laughs> After Fiesta, I think everybody had a good time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Had all the uh, confetti. You had to wash it out. It took a, <laughs> a little while. Yeah, I'm sure you guys. I'm around my house. Every once in a while, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, a there's, spot, there's a spot there. Yeah, <laughs> little, little colorful reminders. Yeah. Yes. Even in our newsroom, right? Yeah. Oh, like yeah. Our newsroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, find Cascarona confetti for days and weeks mm -hmm. on and take a look outside right now this morning uh, you were talking about when is the heat going to return it was pretty darn hot yesterday mm -hmm. and today's gonna be every bit as hot but it's the humidity that's starting to come back in here and look outside they're off in the distance thanks to my good friend mark austin alaska airlines is coming on in here a flight from seattle to uh, san antonio very neat picture and uh, thank you very much for the information on that temperature right now stands at 63 degrees humidity dew point temperatures when you're still below 60 that's very nice now those numbers are starting to creep up a little bit compared to yesterday dew points and they will continue to go up later on this afternoon we've got low 60s a lot of 50s around the area rio medina now down to 52 hondo at 53 degrees so light jackets not a bad idea and we will continue to drop down here in town with these clear skies Basically dry air, light wind, allowing all the, uh, the heat to escape out into space. Mold pecan grass are all on the low side this morning and 80 degrees at noon today. So it's going to be a big warm up over the course of the morning with that drier air. And then we'll top off at 87. Southeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour continues to pull in more humidity around here. So you'll start to notice it more as we go into this afternoon. And then a lot more clouds around here. A few more extras uh, this afternoon and then especially overnight. Humidity is really going to start to pump back in here, which means tomorrow morning at this time we'll be dealing with a little bit of patchy fog, mist, drizzle, same thing on Wednesday. And then we do have some better rain chances, though, later on in the week. We'll take a look ahead. First weekend in May, Kentucky Derby Day on yeah. Saturday, of course. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything big going on out there? Well, uh, Mike, it's just been pretty steady, and I think that's great. We, you know, we're starting a new work week, and folks, there's no real need to rush out the door. Just enjoy your cup of coffee at home. Take a look at the roads behind me. 37 at, bless you, Mike, 37 at Houston. You can see the north and south found lanes aren't moving uh, without any trouble. 35 there north at loop 410. We may have a few folks out there. Remember, there were some sweepers that uh, are finishing up the job, so you may see a few of them out there. And anytime you go through those construction zones, Mike mentioned, make sure to move over or slow down and make sure you follow those speed limits. Giving you a look at the map, it's really been the same uh, this morning, guys. Lots of quiet roadways, but still plenty of that active construction. And right now, that's the main headline on the roads. We'll get some more of that a little bit later on this morning, but let's take a look at the travel times, because if you plan Plan on hitting the roads heading into the Alamo City. Thankfully, there are no delays here. The journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should be about 24 minutes at this hour, and it's a 25 minute commute for those that are traveling along 281 southbound from Bulverde and 26 minutes along I-35 southbound if you're heading in from New Braunfels. Back here on the Transguide cameras, again, the rotation shows some pavement and a few folks out there on 281 at Grayson will continue to track the roads closely, and I'll have an update on more road closures coming up a little bit later on. Guys. Thank you, sir. Computers are part of everyday life and they're gaining a stronger grip on the working world. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, a new report from the World Economic Forum says they could play an increasingly significant role in future employment. Big changes are expected for the global job market. According to a report published Sunday by the World Economic Forum, 14 million jobs will disappear in the next five years as more companies adopt advanced technologies like artificial intelligence. This could potentially save time and resources, but it could also lead to a loss of personal connections and a decline in the quality of these types of interactions. The WEF also says among the three fastest growing jobs are AI and machine learning specialists, sustainability specialists, and business intelligence analysts. The fastest declining jobs are secretarial roles, including bank tellers, cashiers, and data entry clerks. As workers worldwide deal with that, 
In Washington, D.C., the battle over the debt ceiling enters the month of May. President Joe Biden and most Democratic lawmakers want the debt limit raised with no spending cuts. What the president is saying, he's not going to negotiate with someone who's actually threatening the economy, taking the entire economy hostage. And there are Republicans are pushing forward with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy's Limit, Save and Grow Act of 2023, which raises the debt limit but trims the budget. This is no longer about politics. Uh, we have passed a debt ceiling solution. We will not, House Republicans will not allow America to uh, default on its debt. We showed that last week. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot wants Texas Governor Greg Abbott to stop busing migrants to her city. Lightfoot said the city has welcomed more than 8,000 migrants since August of last year. But she says Chicago has run out of resources and shelter space to accommodate the migrants. Lightfoot says her administration is aware of Abbott's plans to resume busing migrants to other cities in the coming days. Lightfoot calls the actions by Abbott, in her words, inhumane and dangerous. The new approach to treating babies exposed to opioids during pregnancy is showing some success. A new a poll shows that Eat Sleep Console Care approach helps newborns get out of the hospital sooner than the current treatment. The technique encourages involvement from parents and prioritizes care that does not involve medication. Instead, parents use techniques such as swaddling, skin-to-skin -skin contact, and breastfeeding. Researchers say the infants using the Eat Sleep Console method left the hospital on average after eight days. Babies treated with the standard approach stay in the hospital for about 15 days. With just five days to go into the coronation of King Charles and Queen Camilla, royal superfans are already lining up around London for the big event. More than one million people are expected to line the streets of London. However, only 2,000 special guests will be inside Westminster Abbey Saturday for the event. Preparations are well underway for the big day with more than 7,000 military personnel participating in dress rehearsals over the weekend. But amid the excitement comes some controversy. In an unprecedented move during the coronation, the Archbishop will ask the public tuning in to vocally pledge allegiance to King Charles and his successors. Critics call the oath offensive and tone deaf. We hate to see it go, but we had fun while it was here. We are talking about the end of Fiesta 2023, but before it was officially over, people got to attend one last party, the Festival de Cascarones. So it was hosted at the Texas A&M University San Antonio campus last night. The event offered food, games, live music, just to name a few. And the money from the event goes to free tuition for students through a drawing. My favorite thing about this event would be look around all the vendors. Uh, plenty of food, plenty of cool merch, an opportunity to just walk around and have fun. And if you're a little sad to see Fiesta go, don't worry. You can watch all the parades, events, and all the other Fiesta coverage. We have it all posted on our website at kset.com. And of course, it is only 238 days until Christmas in case you want some kind of party. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, there. Okay. <laughs> well, well, Mike's gone. And we're down. He's <laughs> not here to have a fit. No, so we're about 364, 363 away from, from Fiesta. From Fiesta. How about that one? Yeah. And we move on from Fiesta food, and now oh, Steph's getting ready there's for Mike. the... Mike. There was a countdown until Christmas, and I didn't I do heard. it this time. Really? <laughs> Where did you come from? Excuse me. <laughs> it's like he left the bathroom just yes, to come here. Just and to come and tell us. <laughs> 539 and 61 degrees. Do you want a new soda that tastes like one of those frozen red, white, and blue bomb pots? Well, up next, you can get Mountain Dew's new summer soda. I've never seen Mike move that fast. I know. <laughs> uh, we're keeping the spirit of fiesta going one more day. Really? Up next, how changes help make this year a success. So got there with live cam. Enjoy the cool for now. We're at 61 degrees. But yes, it's going to be a warm day. We're going to check in for the rest of your week with our Mike. What was that, Mike? Nope, nope. Christmas. No countdown. We didn't. We didn't do it. We didn't do it. Yeah, the, it was hearty. Yeah. It was, uh, so talk <laughs> to the producer, <laughs> or don't. Uh, Fiesta 2023 is officially a wrap, and it was a whirlwind of celebration, fun, and of course the great food. And on leading essay this weekend, the executive director of the Fiesta San Antonio Commission talked to us about some of the changes made this year. 
Steve joined us and we talked about a lot. And we really talked about a full recap of Fiesta highlighted by that phenomenal Fiesta flambeau that happened on Saturday night. But we talked about how this Fiesta went, some of the changes that we saw, and some of the future changes we may see in the next Fiesta. We also talked about the numbers, talked about that economic impact. Here's a part of our discussion. We did a, an economic impact study a few years ago, and the results showed $340 million economic impact to San Antonio. So that's that's a great that's a great boost for the economy for San Antonio, but it doesn't necessarily track the charitable impact that our organizations do too, which is tremendous. And we'll be getting a lot of those numbers back in the next couple of weeks from our organizations. Really, when we say uh, party with a purpose, our organizations are doing a great job of, because of Fiesta, they're able to raise funds to support their organizations that support the citizens of San Antonio throughout the entire year. And that's really why we do Fiesta. You can watch the entire Leading Essay conversation right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Of course, we have Leading Essay every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We talk to leaders in and around our community about timely issues. So, guys, we'll see you some next Sunday morning. Back to you. Thank you, Max. Mike, one last thing. I have a countdown you'll like. It's 94 days to your birthday. Aww. I don't know if I like that one either. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> I can't win. It's a Monday. 544, 61 degrees. Coming up next, keep a look out for a popular brand of flour that's under recall. We're going to tell you why. And we're going to check traffic with Stephen coming up. Welcome back. It's 546 in your morning. Consumer Headlines General Mills is recalling four varieties of gold medal flour due to potential salmonella exposure. The national recall is for two and five bags of, excuse me, two and five pound bags of bleached all-purpose flour and five and ten pound bags of unbleached all-purpose flour with better reviews by dates of March 27th, 28th of 2024. So consumers are asked if they have one of the recalled packages, throw it away. The CDC and FDA say that consumers should not eat foods with raw flour. Salmonella is killed by heat during the cooking process. We have a summer beverage alert. Mountain Dew is releasing a special soda just in time. It's called Summer Freeze. Mountain Dew says it combines the flavors of cherry, lemon, and raspberry with the original Mountain Dew citrus flavor. It may bring those to mind of frozen red, white, and blue bomb pops. Remember those when we were kids? Yes. All right, so the company claims that it tastes like the best summer of your life, whatever that means. It's also available <laughs> in stores in the U.S. throughout summer. It comes in three sizes and has a zero sugar version. Well, the packaging is appropriate because mm -hmm. summertime and 4th of July. I remember those those red, the, white, the, and blue The bomb pops, pops. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, pretty good. Good memories. Yes. It's hot enough it would drip all down your hand. Exactly. Well, <laughs> It's part of it. <laughs> Check out traffic with Steven. Yeah, you know, I was actually at the grocery store yesterday and I was getting some ice cream and I saw one of those uh, bomb pops out there. I was like, hmm. But, you know, I went with the uh, pint of ice cream instead. So, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. All right, that was my night. But let's take a look at your morning because the commute's not too bad here at 35 and 37. Uh, but it's definitely getting busy out there. You can see 16 to 4 at Medio Creek. Thankfully, still really quiet. But uh, we are starting to see some issues pop up. Let's get you to the map because I need to call our friends at Transguide about this. If you're traveling along I-10 westbound near Loop 1604 on the northwest side, you have to watch out because we do have our first crash that's been reported. The good news in this situation is we're not seeing any delays, but we are not uh, sure of any extent of any injuries. We'll work to gather some information, but again, this is in the westbound lanes of I-10 as you approach Loop 1604 on the we uh, northwest side. We'll find out what's going on there and see if we can get a view from the Transguide cameras, but our view here at the map is starting to show a few more issues that popped up. It looks like another crash near 410 and I-35. Maybe somewhere off of the main lanes has occurred. So just watch out. We'll work to get some details on that, but you still see a lot of it is scattered construction. So here's another update of what's happening here along I-10 in Kendall County or what's going to be taking place a little bit later in the week. Wednesday, May 3rd, we will see field testing, and that's basically when crews go out there and they test the integrity of the highways and the main lanes. And we all know that there's plenty of road work that's taking place along I-10. This does begin at 830 in the morning and should wrap uh, at 330 in the afternoon. So uh, keep this in mind for your Wednesday morning commute. We'll see a single westbound main lane closure right there at Russ Road. But if you travel through I-10, you can expect to see plenty of road work out there. Back here on Transguide, 1604 at Medio Creek. Again, things are quiet for now, but we'll find out what, if we can get a shot of the conditions out there uh, at Loop 1604, I-10, and see how that's going to impact the drive time. We are going to have some visitors to San Antonio starting tomorrow for the week. The traveling cast of 
the new version of To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, oh it's okay. Okay. It's the rewrite. Yeah. The rewrite. Uh, it says a new play written by the famous Aaron Sorkin. Um, you get to, to go. I'm going gonna, yep. Saturday. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah, so they're in town starting tomorrow through the 7th. Uh, check for tickets over at the Majestic. Be interested to, to hear what your take is on Yeah. It's, it's like, how do you rewrite? Exactly. I mean, you think Gregory Peck and the famous film, um, and now a new stage version. So, But I trust the guy that did <laughs> A Few Good Men, Social uh, yeah, Network, but, West um, Wing, etc. Oh, yeah, those yep. are all great. Yeah. I remember the book. Yeah, yeah. 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 we all had to read it. Yeah, I think it's okay. so, yeah. Back to popsicles. <laughs> Favorite popsicle or ice or treat from the truck? Oh, gosh. Oh, the that's truck. right. I, I know what you're talking about, the truck. I, yeah. With yeah. all the ice yeah. cream. Mm. What do you think? Uh, I like the creamsicles. You know, by the, you know. the orange, yes. Yes. That's good. Yeah. Ice cream sandwich. Uh, I'm with you on that. Yeah. I was just going to say that. Strawberry shortcake. Oh, Ooh, that, that was a good one. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's but a fantastic one. the creamsicles, too. One. Uh, Somebody, oh, you no, know, stores aren't open. <laughs> All right, take a look at this picture. You know, <laughs> this would be great. Grab a popsicle and Aww. lay in the grass like this guy. And what's nice is with the grass a lot greener, we've had all this moisture around here uh, in the shade yesterday. It was actually a little bit on the coolish side and uh we're gonna be getting some more rain around here but this guy is just love this gal is just loving it out there little scout thank you dog mama kelly all right clear skies continuation of what we had over the weekend this morning with temperatures that will continue to drop down we are right about a normal low right now and we are going to continue to cool down yesterday we got down to 50 we're not going to be that cool and then we warmed up to 87. we will still have a big warm-up going from mid 50s to mid to upper 80s later on on today. So we'll bottom out of 56 degrees. We've got the clear skies, relatively dry air and light wind out there all the way up to 80 at noon. So the dry air is going to heat up quickly. And then we top off at 87. A few more clouds going to build in here, especially some high clouds as the day rolls on. So not as picture perfect as Saturday and yesterday and 87. Same temperatures yesterday. But you're going to notice the humidity a little bit more because these numbers will continue to go up with the southeasterly wind. We've had a northeast to uh, and then eventually a southwesterly wind right now, but southeasterly wind just pulls in the humidity. Mist drizzle around here tomorrow morning. Humidity is going to be sticking around. Once it comes back in, there's nothing even long range that shows us getting rid of the humidity. We had those couple of fronts that moved through last week and yeah, kind of a bit of an anomaly this time of year to get such potent fronts moving on through here to get rid of that humidity, but that's not going to be the situation this week. Here comes the high clouds that will sort of build on in here throughout the afternoon and continue to thicken up as we go into tomorrow. Satellite picture, as you can see, it's just that moisture aloft coming in from the Pacific Ocean. Huge, huge storm complex there over the, uh, the Great Lakes moving up in toward New England and Quebec up in Canada. And really, there's not much off to the west of us. You can see a big load digging out there and that trough. So here's this huge low. This is what pulled the front on through here. And then as that moves on out, we really get the influence of this next big uh, trough and low out there to the west of us, pulling in all that moisture aloft in the atmosphere. We get more moisture from the uh, Gulf of Mexico as well. And then little disturbances will come through here, especially on Thursday. That's what's going to give us a chance for some rain. But notice how this thing doesn't do the same as the one that pulled the front through Friday night. It's just going to everything's kind of kind of stay up there to the north. So we're going to be staying on the humid side, but we do have those rain chances coming in here, especially late Thursday, 80 at noon, mostly sunny skies and then high temperature today makes it up to 87, partly cloudy. Humidity is going to continue to increase as we go on into late this afternoon, especially overnight. It stays pretty humid all week long. Lots of clouds. Temperatures lower tomorrow, Wednesday, and then goes right back up into the mid to upper 80s over the weekend. Showers and thunderstorms, especially late Thursday, could have some potentially heavy downpours in spots. That's what we'll have to be on the lookout for then. All right. We will be. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. 554, 60 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, nine, eight, zero, Fireball two. Daily four, three, six, nine, one, Fireball two. And your cash five numbers, four, nine, 29, 31, 32. Lotto Texas, 7, 17, 25, 41, 45, 53. And Powerball, 16, 53, 54, 57, 65. Powerball eight, Power Play two.
Good morning. It's a Monday here at GMA. We'll start with the failing First Republic Bank, seized and sold. J.P. Morgan Chase bought it, saved it from the brink of collapse. Now we're going to tell you what it means for everybody. And then the urgent manhunt in Texas for the suspect who authorities say killed five people, including a nine-year-old boy, after having a dispute with his neighbors. You'll see that story and so much more right here on GMA. We're running a little behind. Let's jump right into Transguide right now. Things looking good at 1604 in Shanefield. We'll be back after this next break.